It happened again. I got another message here of somebody who ain't getting paid for the work that they done did. Today on Contractor Fight TV, I'm going to get into your grill a little bit about why you need to stop doing work without a contract. Let's go. All right, my friends, if I had a nickel for every message we got in a 365 day period of time each year, I'd have a shit ton of nickels because these messages I get for many of you are things like this. Customer doesn't want to pay. What can I do now? I did this additional work for the customer and now they're not paying me because of this, that, and the other thing. Guys, I can go on and on. We get messages like this all the time of y'all not getting paid or you know, you're getting just raked over the coals in so many different ways. And it all starts, first and foremost, it starts the contractor fights all about the battle between our ears and your value and shit that we talk about here. But tactically, guys, here, practically, it's all about do you have a fucking contract or not? I am absolutely blown away by how many of you guys actually do this. You willingly do this. You walk up to a door, you take your junk, and you stick it in the door and you go wham, wham, wham and you slam your junk in the drawer or in the door over and over because you think this contract shit is optional. Stop slamming your crap, your junk in the door. It's self-imposed pain here when you don't have a contract for the work that you're fucking doing for people. I don't care what the amount of the, the, the work is. Something has to be in writing. So today, I'm gonna share some things from my own experience that you must have in your contract before you do any work whatsoever. Number one, guys, you gotta have a, you, you, you don't schedule a job, mobilize your team, order materials and, and block out time on the schedule unless you have a signed contract and a fucking deposit check, okay? I know all your states are different, what it is, California, you guys are fucked at 10%, I think, or whatever, you know, we get 50% and stuff like that, okay? But guys, if they're not willing to sign the paperwork and have some skin in the game to book the time with you, they don't get on the calendar and for God's sake, don't do any work. All right, but your contract, your paperwork has to have these things in it. Number one, a clear scope. What's included and what's not included. In fact, we had a clause in one of our contracts many years ago that said, at the very bottom of the scope of work, bold, highlighted, bigger font said, if, it, if, if something was not um, specifically mentioned above, it's not included. That way, that was our cover our ass phrase, okay? But we're basically like, we're painting the walls and the walls are getting this, and this is the color, and this is the number of coats. This is the prep work that's gonna be done. What's included, what's not included. A lot of you guys are opening up a big, can of whoop ass on yourself because you refuse to sit down and take the time to do this. And then you wonder why you're broke year after year after year and all that other shit. Gotta have a clear scope. Second thing, clear pricing. What does it fucking cost? Okay, and if there's unforeseen conditions, how are you gonna handle those things? Okay, we used to remove a lot of wallpaper and we specifically spelled out, hey, here's the price to paint the rooms Okay, it was five grand to paint the rooms, but in this room here in the dining room, this is how the wallpaper removal will be addressed. Okay, it will be done at time and materials. It will be $75 per man per hour to get the paper off, repair anything behind it, and get the walls ready for paint. So everything from pulling the paper off to us popping a can of paint and putting the new paint on the wall was done at TNM because in most cases, we didn't know how the paper was gonna come off. And I know every, every industry has shit like that. But guys, you have to be clear on your pricing. You have to be clear on how you're handling things. Next thing, you must have in your contract, clear payment terms. When do they owe you money? When are you getting it? What happens if they don't pay you on time? There's two parts of this payment term here that I see a lot of contractors get themselves in trouble with. You guys, some of you guys actually have these contracts. You actually have clear payment terms, but you don't fucking enforce them yourself. Yeah, they gave us a deposit and then we hit this, you know, milestone on the job and they owe us more money. And then they don't give you the more money per what they signed and what they agreed. 
But what do you do? You keep working because you're a nice fucking guy. Quit being a nice guy. Call a timeout and you go, hey, Bob, Mary, here we are on the job. Per the contract, I need another progress payment of X amount of dollars. I can't continue work until that happens. Clear payment terms that you actually enforce because you can't expect them to follow your terms if you don't. Next thing here, timing expectations. I'm looking at Noel behind the camera right now. Noel, right now, this is where a lot of these guys are going, I can't predict how long it's gonna take. Okay, well then guess what guys? Find a new profession. Because if you're gonna be a professional anything, you know how fucking long something's gonna take within reason and you could map it out on a calendar and reverse engineer the progress of each day. If you're not willing to do that and put it in writing, I think you've got a lot of work to do as a business owner. Okay, some of the, I, I tell you what, this thing right here, this timing expectation is one of the lowest hanging fruits for you to provide a great experience for people. Guarantee your fucking scheduling with conditions, of course. Hey, if mother nature decides to piss on us for six weeks straight, we got a problem. If we open up a wall and there's this, then our time will change, our expectations will change. And these are things that you communicate with the customer. Guys, clear scope, clear pricing, clear payment terms, clear timing expectations. We will start on such and such date or the week of. We will finish such and such date. That's refreshing to a customer, by the way, to a prospect, because they're tired of getting dragged around by unreliable contractors who don't have a fucking plan. Final thing here, guys, that needs to be in your contract. And there's other things. There are other things, but these are the must-haves. Additional work process. What happens if we find an unforeseen condition? What will happen next? We will call a timeout and we will have this conversation. Or this is how it will be priced or whatever it might be, has to be clear. We will not do any additional work without a signed new contract for the additional work. And in some cases, one of the things I like to do is if I do an additional you know, work or upsell for somebody for a thousand bucks, whatever my normal deposit schedule is, if it's a third or 50%, I get that before I do the additional work too. Same terms. Guys, when you have these things dialed in, you're gonna have less problems later on with, you know, bickering customers, slow and no pays, getting sued, all that other bullshit that too many of you guys struggle with. Inevitably, somebody's gonna type in the comments here or send us an email, well, Tom, how do I make one of these contracts? Guys, there's this thing, it's crazy, it's called Google. G-O-O-G-L-E. You ever heard of Google, Noel? No. Okay, Google's this thing where you actually type a question into it and when you hit enter, millions of results come back for you to do this. So if you're a hardwood contractor, hardwood flooring contractor, all right, you're gonna type in contracts for hardwood flooring contractors and you're gonna hit enter and guess what? There's gonna be examples that come up there. You might have to pony up and buy a little template from somebody, which is cool. Or best yet, go to your association of hardwood flooring contractors or paint contractors and search their website because they probably have contracts that are for your industry. And if they don't, then you call your attorney. And you call your attorney anyway because even when you do this, you still need to have your attorney check the thing and make sure that you're protected because you wanna play good defense here. Too many of y'all are waiting for somebody to hand shit to you. Seriously, that's what I get annoyed with. How do I find a contract for my company? Fucking figure it out, seriously. There's a lot of things you've figured out in your life. I think you could figure this out too. And then have a, have a damn attorney go over it. It's that simple. Guys, this stuff's not hard. Last thing you wanna do is get in a pissing match with a customer. But the last thing, the last, last thing you want is to be in a pissing match with a customer and you don't have a leg to stand on. Because time and time again, when people send messages to us and my coaches and they're like, this is a situation, blah, blah, blah. Our first question is, what does your contract say? Well, I don't have a written contract. And our reply is, sorry, Bob, you're fucked. You're gonna get what you get at this point. In fact, I can't believe I'm just remembering this now. I remember getting a message from somebody not too long ago, meaning a year or two ago. It was from a spouse and they were going bankrupt because Johnny Hero husband decided it was a good idea to do a $300,000 addition on somebody's house without a contract. 
okay? And there were a couple hundred thousand dollars out of pocket on the thing, and the customers decided they didn't want to pay him. So don't be like Johnny Hero Husband, or whatever the fucker's name was, all right? Guys, don't, this is another way you steal from your family, is you don't have proper contracts in place. I want to invite you all to go to the contractorfight.com forward slash Facebook. For those of you that want to be spoon fed a little, this is a great community of people. There's other hardwood contractors and there's remodelers and this and that, where even in that group, you could just type in and go, hey, does anyone have a contract they'd be willing to share with me? And it's a great resource there in case you're too lazy to go to Google and figure it out on your own. So, I don't know. Anyway. We do have a great community there. Just be prepared to own your crap within 24 hours. You guys rock, I gotta roll. We'll see you next time.